Later on, I got the chance to speak one-on-one -on -one with the High Commissioner, Mrs. Katrina Lang, on her formidable leading women's team, her passion for media freedom, and the strengthening of Nigeria-UK ties. Bear in mind, she's the first female British High Commissioner to Nigeria. Hi, Commissioner Katina Lang. Thank you for speaking with us on Diplomatic Channel. You're the first female British High Commissioner to Nigeria. And incidentally, the outgoing Deputy High Commissioner, Miss Law Buffies, is also a woman. And then you'll come with a formidable team of women, you know, to Nigeria. Can this all be attributed to the campaigns on gender equality in the UK? Well, I think it's simply a recognition that 50% of the population are female, and if you don't promote and encourage talent from everywhere, you'll be losing out. Um, but I am the first British High, female British High Commissioner to Nigeria, and that is a great privilege and an honour. And I'm delighted to be taking up the position. It's the job I've always wanted. It's our biggest mission in Africa by far. It's our most senior Ambassador High Commissioner in Africa. So not only am I the first female High Commissioner, I'm also the most senior High Commissioner across the Africa network. And as you say, I have two fantastic female deputies, one outgoing, Laura Bowfields, but soon to be replaced by the current deputy in Abuja, Harriet, and Harriet herself will also be replaced by a woman. So we remain a top female team, and we see that as also a responsibility to encourage and mentor other young female diplomats coming through the system to encourage them to aspire to the very top jobs. Any pressure to act differently just because you're a woman to do things differently? I think you have to be yourself. The most important thing is to be authentic, whatever your personal style is. I think as an all-female team, we do probably do things a little bit differently. I think and I hope we listen more, we can empathize more with the female population in Nigeria alone. We have a natural affinity to understand some of the challenges that they personally are going through. I think the female touch can help. I'm redoing my residence, for example, a bit of an interior design. I do care about the environment I live in. I have personal passions, including female arts. I'm going to try and promote female artists. So there are things you inevitably do slightly differently as a woman. But the most important thing, whoever your top team is, is to encourage the diversity of thought the talent from everyone in the mission, including, of course, all our very good male colleagues. You're coming at a peculiar time in Nigeria. The political landscape is changing, and we're experiencing our own version of the hashtag MeToo movement. What are your thoughts and your observations about that? Well, I'm personally pleased to see this movement starting in Nigeria. As you said, we've had a similar movement in the UK and Europe, and I think it's been a real eye-opener to a lot of people who had not been prepared to confront, frankly, some of the appalling behaviours that were condoned in the past, including in the UK. When I joined the um, Department for International Development as a young junior economist, I faced some of this myself. Many of us did. And it was just taken for granted that you would have to put up with sexual harassment and, in the worst cases, actual physical abuse. So a lot of us have been through it. And we therefore absolutely applaud those women who are prepared to stand up and defend this and say this is just simply not acceptable. Um, it's a difficult thing to confront, particularly when you have to confront something you've been through personally. But I'm very pleased this movement is taking off in Nigeria. And I want to work very closely with those female leaders and indeed male, male leaders who are willing to challenge this. I think the key issue is what are the objectives? What do we need to change? Whether it's legislative frameworks or perhaps what's obviously harder is deep deeply held social and cultural values, but they should never be an excuse, in my view, for abuse and exploitation of women. So I'm personally very pleased this is now out there. And also as part of your assignment as High Commissioner, um, which is your major assignment is to continue to maintain the good relations and the ties that Nigeria and Britain share, um, you're also passionate about a few other things. One of them is media freedom. Yes, so this is an important objective um, for our government and for me personally. This is around media freedom, the rights of journalists to investigate and report without fear of being arrested, detained, intimidated. So uh, our Foreign Secretary, Jeremy Hunt, one of the two contenders for the leadership of the Conservative Party and indeed future Prime Minister, came here recently. And one of the issues he's passionate about and has asked all of us to, to take forward is media freedom. So the UK will be hosting a summit in London the 10th and 11th of July, and we're co-hosting with Canada 
Um, we have a media envoy, Amal Clooney, very famous human rights lawyer, who is working with us on this. So the idea is to use this summit to shine a spotlight on this issue, to support those journalists who have bravely stood up and investigated difficult stories, holding government to account, for example, for corruption, um, to ensure that they feel that they can continue with those investigative stories. So there will be practical help provided. We're going to set up a defence fund so uh, journalists who are arrested can access funding to hire lawyers to defend themselves because it's very expensive if you're in that situation. We're also going to help governments put in place the laws and processes they need to defend media freedom. And we're going to encourage people to join a network of media freedom defenders. So when an arrest happens, quickly we can mobilize, shine a spotlight on this and ensure that journalists can be quickly released if they're detained. So that's the idea of the summit. I personally feel very strongly about it. The media freedom is a bedrock of democracy and we all need to support and encourage it. Um, Nigeria is a country that we want to work with to try and support and encourage media freedom. So Nigeria, of course, has been invited to the summit, um, including a number of journalists who will represent uh, the, their perspective on things. So this is not really about a blame game. It's recognizing that everyone's on a journey with this and we want to support and help people. All we ask is that people come with an open mind and understand the benefits for a country of having a free media. It's actually a terribly important bedrock of democracy and we hope Nigeria will participate with enthusiasm. Your last assignment was ambassador to Zimbabwe, but this is your first assignment to West Africa and Nigeria, as you said, is one of the largest um, uh, uh, missions that you have in Africa. You've been here for at least six months. Have there been any challenges to your expectations about the country? You're right. Africa is basically my career. I was um, ambassador, actually, in Zimbabwe, because Zimbabwe, of course, is an, at the moment not a member of the Commonwealth. We hope they'll return. Um, but I've also worked in Botswana, Kenya, Somalia, Sudan, as well as Afghanistan. So I do have, as you say, a lot of experience working in Africa. Um, but I don't think you've really done Africa until you've been west. And if you come west, you have to be in Nigeria, the biggest, most exciting, most dynamic, challenging country in Africa, let alone West Africa. In terms of my expectations, I mean, I have, although I haven't worked in West Africa, I grew up in a part of London that's very multicultural. I had very close friends from Nigeria, from Ghana, hanging out at their houses, eating the jollof rice. So I kind of had a, a bit of an understanding of the culture aspects and good friends with enjoying their music and, as I said, food and culture. So not completely new to me. Um, it's as challenging as I was expecting. It's as interesting as I was expecting. It can be frustrating at times, there's no question, but ultimately what you always come down to is the dynamism, the creativity, the drive, the friendliness, and the welcome, welcomeness of the uh, Nigerian people. So it's lived up to my expectations, I would say. Well, back then when you were in school and you, know, you had relations with Nigerians and Africans and so on, did you ever think behind you, you know, at the back of your head, did you ever think that you would one day be living and working in Africa or Nigeria? Well, I always knew that my career was going to be in, in something international and particularly focused on Africa. What I didn't know exactly what my pathway would be to get there. And I certainly didn't expect to be High Commissioner to Nigeria. And my career has been actually quite an unusual one. I started as an economist in development. I spent five years working in our cabinet office. Um, I've worked for the NATO mission in Afghanistan with the UN in Somalia. So my pathway has been a little bit circuitous. Um, and that's my message, actually, to a lot of young, aspiring female diplomats. Take every opportunity, including the ones that look a little bit frightening, because that's what you will learn from. And I think my experience, which is very wide ranging, is what positions me well, actually, to be High Commissioner to Nigeria, where we have such a wide ranging set of interests from organized crime to prosperity to female empowerment. And I've worked on a lot of these issues in different countries. So having a diverse career actually positions you very well to lead a mission like this. Nigerians are watching the developments in Britain with particular attention on the role of Prime Minister. You have two candidates left. A politics surrounding Brexit. Do you think that the concerns from this part of the world are as valid, especially as regards Brexit? 
Well, I think Brexit is, is absolutely challenging for the UK. I mean, that's, there's no surprises there. We're going through quite a challenging time in our politics. Um, because it has very much divided opinion. You know, as you can see, people are very much in one camp or another, pro-Brexit or to remain. And that means whoever takes over as Prime Minister is going to face an important challenge to bring the country back together. Um, but what, one thing that unites, I think, across our politics, um, including the other political parties, is the importance of Britain's role in the world post-Brexit. We want it to be very clear to everyone. We're not retreating. In fact, we see ourselves as taking a stronger, more positive, independent role post-Brexit. And our relationships with Commonwealth countries and African countries in particular will become even more important. So I think in a way Brexit has helped us understand the importance of those relationships and the need to invest in them and strengthen them. So for example, for the first time we're hosting an African Investment Summit in the UK in January, January the 20th. We're inviting our top 20 African partners and of course Nigeria is one of those. So that's an example of where um, we're trying to put our real backing behind our relationships and take them from strength to strength. And that will be uh, even with a no-deal Brexit? Even under a no-deal Brexit, in many ways, that will make it even more imperative. You know, that will obviously create some challenges for us in the short term, um, but we're a resilient, robust country. Um, we're a powerful country still. We're a member of NATO. Um, we're a top G7 economy. We're the only country that has committed and delivered on 0.2% GNI commitment for aid. Um, we're a member of the UN Security Council. None of that changes post-Brexit. So we have a set of networks and relationships, including a fabulous relationship with our Commonwealth countries. And I think post-Brexit, we'll have the confidence to, to build on that and take it even further. Hi, Commissioner Katrina Lang. Thank you for speaking with us. This is our Stop on Diplomatic Channel this week. Thanks again for watching. As usual, I look forward to hearing from you via the addresses showing on your screen. I am Amarachi Ubani. I'll see you next time.